This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Welcome back to another video presentation brought to you in part by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at set theory. And when we talk about set theory, we're talking about all the information that's related to sets, right? That describes the relationship between sets and also will help us to solve problems involving sets. All right, so here, we want to start off by looking at the definition, right? And we talk about a set, we're talking about a collection of items that share a common characteristic or satisfy a similar condition, all right? And we say that a set can be finite, which means that we can list out all the elements inside of the set or infinite, which means that we cannot list out all the elements inside of the set, okay? Notice that the members of a mathematical set are called elements. So here when I was talking about elements and here when I was talking about elements I'm basically talking about the members of the set okay we use the letters we use capital letters to denote um, sets okay example capital A could be a set capital B could also be a set or capital C as a matter of fact any capital letter from the alphabet could be a set all right here the number of elements in the set is denoted by right n of A, for example, which reads the number of elements in A, right? N of B, which means the number of elements in B, or N of C, which means the number of elements in C, all right? And notice here, A, B, and C have to be finite because we want to count up those elements, okay? So when we're describing sets, right, we have three different ways in which we can describe the set, right? So here we could list in curly braces or brackets, Right? We could actually list out elements. Here I list out one, two, three, and four. Right? And here we have a set, and we could call this A, right? We could use words, which means that I could say that the set B is equal to even positive integers less than 10. Okay? even positive integers less than 10. Let's see if we could write this as a list, all right? So we would have two, four, six, eight, okay? So here we see that this is one way to write B, right? And this is another way how to write B, okay? Notice that here we have to recall our number sets, right? So here integers is one of the main number sets. Okay, so I know we don't remember the number sets at this time, and so I want to remind us that we have the set of real numbers, right, which is denoted by the symbol R. We have the set of integers, right, denoted by Z, right? We also have the set of natural numbers denoted by capital N, and we have whole numbers denoted by W, capital of course. And finally we have Q, which is the set of, so I think I put the symbol here first, the set of rational numbers, right? And the important thing I want you guys to recall here is that this is infinite, okay? And integers is also infinite, but it is countable, okay? It is countable in the sense that it's discrete, okay? So we can identify each and every element as a number, okay? It is impossible to identify all real numbers, right? Because there's always something that you're going to miss. But for integers, we can identify each integer point, Okay, likewise natural numbers. So we want to recognize which one is countable and which one is not countable, okay? So here we have countable, 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 and not countable. So the only elements, the only sets here which are not countable, right, are the set of real numbers and the set of rational numbers, okay? So when we're talking about the set of rational numbers, we'll recognize this as 
infinite and not countable, right? And likewise, for the set of real numbers, we recognize it as infinite and not countable. But for integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers, we will recognize them as countable sets, okay? So continuing, here we can use inequalities, lastly, to describe our set. So here I'll say, here x is an element of z, right? Which means that x is an integer, right? Such that x is less than or equal to 4. Okay, so this is another way to define a set, right? By using this inequation, we can help to define the set or describe the set, all right? Now, let's look at membership. And when we talk about membership, we're simply saying, can we say whether or not an element is a member of a set, okay? So here, it's important to note that epsilon is used to mean is a member of, okay? So whenever we see the symbol E, right, which is epsilon, we should read is a member of. So here we can say that X is a member of A, right? So that's what it is saying. So in words, we can say X is a member of A, right? That's what this means in words. And likewise, we can see from, if we backtrack, we can see that four is a member of A and one is a member of A, right? From here, right? So when we say is a member of, we're saying whether or not these elements here, right? So we say four, which is right here, is a member of A. So we are saying that four is in the set A, okay? And we use epsilon to denote that relationship. So let's look at some example questions, right? To increase our understanding. Here it says, which of the following is an infinite set? All right, so we have A, which is one, two, three, and four, right? Is it infinite or is it finite? This is a finite set. Okay, the number of elements inside of this set is equal to 4. Okay, this one is infinite, right? Infinite but still countable, okay? Meaning, can we identify the elements one by one, right? Yes, we can. So therefore, it is countable. And the number of elements inside of B is equal to? infinity because it is infinite. So since it is infinite, the number of elements must be infinity, okay? Here, C is an infinite set, right? But it is uncountable, right? Somebody's asking, how do I know it's uncountable? And it's simply uncountable because here we're saying that X is a member of real. And as we were defining the real numbers before, a real number set is an uncountable set. Okay, so here X is a member of real, such that we're looking at the numbers in between 0 and 1, right? So how many numbers are in between 0 and 1? At first, if you think about it, you'll probably say two numbers, or three, or four, or five. But actually, we have an infinite amount of numbers in between 0 and 1. So here, the number of elements in C is equal to infinity. Let's look at this one. This one is finite. And I know we're tempted to say that X is in between 1 and 10. How comes this time it's finite? Here, we're looking at the natural numbers, right? And the natural numbers is a countable set, okay? Okay? It's a countable set. The set of real numbers is not countable. This one is countable. So here, can we count the number of natural numbers in between 1 and 10? Yes. If we count them up, we should see that the number of elements in D is equal to 10, all right? Now we look at all prime numbers. P equals the set of all prime numbers. Is that finite or is that infinite? That's a good guess, but this one is infinite, okay? It's infinite and countable, okay? But the number of elements here in P is equal to infinity, all right? So that's it for this video. That is it for this video. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe for future post notification.